What's up guys, welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, today I wanna to talk about developing a, a practice routine or a shot routine. Um, that you can really focus on either all the steps or a, a certain aspect of the step that you're struggling on uh, in order to really commit it to muscle memory and the subconscious. Um, and then, you know, in a pressure situation, whether it's a shot on a big buck or, um, uh, you know, a, a tournament or, you know, to win league night or whatever it is, uh, when the arrow really matters, you know, you need to have a mental game and a mental routine that's going to keep you in the moment and in that shot. Uh, I know a lot of guys who are phenomenal practice shooters, you know, they'll shoot on Vegas rounds, they'll shoot anywhere from, you know, 23 to 28 X's pretty consistently. And then they get to even just league night or, you know, any sort of tournament and the wheels just fall off. They know that they're capable of doing it, but when the arrows actually matter, um, they have a hard time putting them in the center. So starting with just kind of what to do, um, as this is gonna be especially helpful for your newer shooters, um, but when you, especially when you're first starting out, you need to really consciously practice each step. Um, and in doing so, time and time and time and time again, pretty soon there will be, it'll be committed to your subconscious. Like for example, I don't think about my grip on the bow anymore. I've done it so many times and practiced it so much that it just happens. Um, but when you're starting off, you know, it's a foreign thing. So you need to really be conscious of each step. So it all starts with the feet. Um, if your stance is not the same every single time, you're gonna have a really, really hard time um, committing, you know, a, a consistent shot. Because if my, if my hips are aligned differently, that's gonna align my shoulders and my torso differently, which when the shot breaks, you know, my body's gonna torque one way or the other and I'm gonna get different points of impact. Uh, so the easiest way to do this is put just like a strip of duct tape down uh, perpendicular over the shooting line and really use that to line up your feet. Whether you shoot a neutral stance, open stance, closed stance, make sure your feet are in the same position every time. The second part of that process is going to be really practicing getting that grip in position. So, you know, you hook your release onto the string. So we got our stance set, we hook the release on. Now that I've got that release on, I can really take my time and get that grip set just right. Um, once we draw the bow, you know, if you're a newer shooter, I want you to really practice coming into that anchor just one time. What I really don't like people doing is they come in and it's, it's this, you know, they sit there and they, they come into their anchor like six or seven times before they actually settle. Um, you really want to practice on just that one, one time, you know, it comes back, boom, you're in your anchor point. Once you're in your anchor point, you know, then we're going to start focusing on, on loading the back or back tension, which I have videos on that if you haven't seen that. Um, so that kind of ties into like the aiming process, which really the more you shoot, the steadier you're gonna start to hold. Um, and then obviously, you know, whether you're squeezing a trigger or, or rolling through a hinge or a thumb button, you know, really focusing on that shot execution. Uh, proper execution will result in proper follow through. Meaning, you know, if I actually sit there and roll through that hinge and have my back loaded, in like even push pull, and it's you know, rolling through, rolling through, boom, the shot breaks. That follow through, so that this hand coming back over the collarbone behind the ear and that front arm driving forward and then kind of down and away, that's a result of proper shot execution. Um, I see a lot of guys where, you know, they punch the trigger and they just throw this hand. It's this like, or, or it's, you know, the hand just stays right there. Um, again, follow through is a, a reaction, not a forced action. Um, so really by focusing on proper execution, good follow through will just happen naturally. Um, so what I mean by consciously practicing each one of these steps until they become subconscious is if I, if I actively think before each step, okay, you know, there's my grip, there's that touch point, my hand touches my face, there's my anchor. Eventually there'll be all these little subconscious cues that are built. Um, a good example of that for, for me anyway, and I think a lot of like, you know, pro shooters, you'll hear them say, uh, you know, I don't really think about my release. Like once the pin hits the dot, I pretty much just wait for it to go off. In order to get to that point, they had to think about once that pin hit the target, they had to think about, okay, it's on there. Now start, you know, whether it's relaxing the hand or pulling through, however they get that release to fire, they had to consciously think about that at some point. Now for, in my case, and a lot of people's cases, I think, for me, because I practiced it so much, like once my pin would settle, I think, okay, now go. And what I, you know, what I mean by go is like on my hinge, it was like, all right, keep building that back pressure and just relaxing, you know, relaxing the hand until the shot fires. 
So I've done that so many times that now as soon as my pin hits the dot, my release clicks and it's almost time to go. I'm not thinking about it, but I've done it so many times that that pin hitting the spot is my subconscious cue for my hand to start relaxing and for me to start, you know, basically pulling through the shot until the shot breaks. So by consciously practicing something, you will eventually submit it to your subconscious and ultimately your, uh, your muscle memory. So again, going over those steps real quick, you know, I'm real picky about stance, you know, grip, coming into anchor, loading the back or my back tension, and then rolling through the execution. Now that could be, you know, squeezing the trigger. If you have a thumb button, you're just pulling against it until it fires. If you have a hinge, you know, some people relax the hand, other people physically start rolling the release. But eventually, you won't have to think about that. That will just become part of your, your routine. Um, now once you've kind of mastered the, the physical side of things like that, and like I said, this comes back to where people are great practice shooters, but in tournaments they fall apart. Um, you know, if you can shoot, let's say, a 300 with 55 X's on an NFA round in practice, you can shoot that anytime. It's all in your head. And I'm by no means an expert on this. There's a lot of people that know a lot of people that know a lot more about uh, the mental game than I do. Um, but for me, you know, when I used to shoot and compete at a high level, um, when I when I felt like I was in the zone, and and when I say in the zone, it's like sometimes you just have those days um, where everything just feels like it's working. It's because I was really almost like hyper focused on each arrow. I was very present for each arrow. Um, I wasn't thinking about the arrows that led up to that point or what I needed to do after that point. I was focused on that arrow and that arrow alone. And that is a huge benefit, whether, like I said, whether you're shooting a big buck that walks under your stand, um, obviously you don't want to blow that shot, you only get one chance, or you're, you're shooting an arrow to win a tournament or you know push it to a shoot off or whatever. Um, archery really is 90% mental once you get to that physical point. I mean, unless you're like physically ill, and are having trouble holding steady or like, you know, you're an alcoholic and you got the shakes or something, um, you know, you should be able to execute a shot just the same way you do in practice um, when you're shooting. And one mental program that I always really helped me was to literally visualize shooting that arrow from start to finish before I ever draw the bow. Um, and what I mean by that is like, you know, I load my arrow and then I'm just gonna stare at that X for a second and I'm gonna think about what it's gonna feel like when I hit full draw, when I come into my anchor, what my sight picture is gonna look like as that pin settles. You know, that pressure on my fingers as I start to roll through the hinge. Um, and then literally just envisioning that arrow drop right in behind the pin into the X. Um, for me, that does two things. A, it slows me down. A lot of people, when they get under pressure, they start shooting a lot faster, so your muscles are fatiguing and they're not having time to recover as much. And B, by, by visualizing and picturing that shot and doing making the shot in my head before I ever draw the bow back, I've already shot that arrow in the middle. I know that I can do it because I just did it in my head. And it really helps me be present in, in that moment. I'm not thinking, you know, oh, if I hadn't dropped that one arrow two rounds ago, I wouldn't be in this position. You know, I'm not thinking, oh, I, I hope I hit this. Like, you need to think, I know I can do this. I've done it a million times. I'm gonna do it right now before I actually shoot the arrow. And then when I'm gonna draw this, this arrow back. Um, that pin's gonna settle and I'm gonna punish that X. Um, so the, the visualization side of things has always really helped me. And you'll hear a lot of the pros in interviews that say, yeah, my mental game was really strong today. And a lot of time what that means is that they've been, they're focused on their shot routine, shot to shot. They're not, they're not worried about the big picture. You know, you can only control the arrow that's on your bow, right? You can't, you can't go get an arrow you've already shot and you, you sure as heck can't you know, decide what the arrows that are gonna come after the one you're shooting are gonna do. It's only each, the arrow that's on your bow that, that you can control. So by developing that routine that I was talking about earlier with stance, grip, anchor, all that, you know, if you're a newer shooter, you can focus on that routine in a, a pressure moment like that and it takes your mind off of, you know, oh, are these people watching me or, uh, you know, you, you need to just be present in that moment. Now, nerves are obviously a thing, whether it's a big buck or again, you know, an arrow to win a tournament, you're gonna feel nerves. Um, as a tournament shooter, you know, lots of people say, I get a lot of messages like, hey, how can I, you know, how can I combat the nerves? And honestly, the only answer I have is I say, go to as many tournaments as you can. 
When you start getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, you put yourself in that position a lot of times and you, you start understanding how you react. Um, eventually it's not as big of a deal. You're not as worried, you're not as jittery. Um, obviously, you're gonna feel some jitters. And in that case, if that pin isn't just sitting dead center how it usually does, you need to focus more on the execution of the shot. Tell yourself, okay, I know this pin is gonna float a little bit. I'm just gonna make a strong shot and work that pin towards the middle until the shot breaks. You know, even if that pin isn't dead center when the shot breaks, as long as my front arm is pushing the pin in the direction of the center, when that shot breaks, that pressure of my front arm is actually gonna help give that arrow direction. So, you know, for example, like here's the dot that I'm aiming at. Let's say my pin is, you know, it's it's over here. Well, for me, it's on the right. For you, it's on the left side. And it's, it's you know, I'm working it in, working it in, working it in, boom, the shot breaks right here. Because my arm is pushing the pin in that direction, even though the pin wasn't dead center when the shot fires, it's gonna push that arrow towards the middle. Um, and so in, in a pressure situation like that, where you're fe feeling a little bit jittery, again, focus on the execution. The pin is gonna float. There's nobody on the planet that can hold a pin perfectly still in the middle. There's a lot of pros where it looks pretty darn close. They're probably holding within an inch or inch and a half. Um, but for the most part, you know, that pin is gonna float a little bit. Let it float, focus on the execution, and you'll be much happier with your results. Um, now, if you wanna really go into the mental side of things, there is a book that I recommend. Um, it's called With Winning in Mind by Lonnie or Lanny Basham. Uh, he was actually an Olympic pistol shooter and he developed a mental management program. Um, it's a really interesting read. And I did, I gave a very Reader's Digest version of it right there. I just kind of picked and pulled some parts from it. Um, but he talks a lot, you know, there's, there's a lot of processes that you can go through. And he essentially has like a Venn diagram of these different things. Um, but he's worked with all sorts of athletes and, and like businessmen and entrepreneurs um, to develop a, a plan and a goal that you can work towards and a system to work towards that goal. So I recommend that. Again, it's called With Winning in Mind by Lanny Basham. Um, and really, really good book. So anyway, I thought I'd just give this video because I see a lot of people who just sling arrows down range and they're not actually putting any thought into each arrow. You know, if you're just shooting arrows for the sake of shooting arrows and you're not making each one as best you can, you're never really, you're gonna plateau. You're never gonna reach that next level. So if you have any more questions on this, please feel free to reach out. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment below. Uh, we really appreciate all the support. And until next time, remember precision is, is a decision. I'll see you on the range and uh, keep them in the middle.